know, just how should I put it, in the grip, in the grip of economics, we could only make films that a star wanted to do, or that a producer wanted to produce, or a distributor wanted to distribute. We couldn't go out there and make a story the way we wanted to. And then one day I thought, if you are a storyteller, just tell a story. And I think that's where the journey started. I started writing on Facebook. I started writing different kinds of stories, and I wrote 204 stories every day, nonstop. Um, and then Sony Live uh, came to me, and uh, we had a conversation. And you know, uh, they had been following the stories, and they liked it very much. And it was their idea, I must say, it was Sony Live's idea to um, to ask me whether I would like to narrate these stories in a dramatic fashion, because not everybody likes to read, but a lot of people like to hear stories. And I thought it was a brilliant idea. And that's where the journey of Once Upon a Time started. So here we are, back to telling stories, hearing stories, and hopefully everyone there will like my stories. So I am to tell you a story that I have written. And to this group here, I am to read a story. So let's start with a story. Buddha had once said that three things cannot stay hidden. The sun, the moon, and the truth. Time and again it has been proved that secrets destroy lives, and yet they continue to exist. But as Buddha said, the truth always comes out. After all, a secret cannot die a secret. And so, once upon a time, Jay would never listen to her, and that was the biggest problem with him. Sonaina had urged him to get the refrigerator company to ship the refrigerator only after he got back from his 10-day business trip. But he had forgotten. Here was a refrigerator now, and she had to deal with the bills and the various certificates. She just hated dealing with paperwork. She sent Jay a message. Thanks, but no thanks. Jay sent her three smileys back. There was a time when one smiley did the job, and then someone thought that one was not enough, and now it was a given that the more you love, the more smileys you send. It was late on a Friday night. Two days since she had the refrigerator up and running, Jay was only four days into the trip. It would be another week before he got back. Sunaina was fast asleep. She had left the windows open to let in the quiet breeze that blew the white chiffon drapes into the air like they were dancing to a silent symphony. The door to her bedroom slowly creaked open like it had a life of its own. Sunaina woke up with the sound of the doorknob hitting the wall. It must be the wind that must have thrown the door open, she thought. She got out of bed to shut the door when she heard the breathing sound. It was a clear, undisguised breathing sound. Unmistakable. Yet, it did not seem human. It certainly wouldn't suit a burglar to break in and spend his time making breathing sounds. She decided to investigate. She turned the lights on in the house, but they flickered in an odd way, and 
then blew out. She could swear that the breath was louder and almost like a sigh as the lights went out. The cell phone lay close by and Sonayana switched the torchlight application on. In the beam of the white light, she began to walk to the source of the sound. It seemed to be coming from the kitchen. So Nana walked closer to the refrigerator and then turned the beam to shine on the new metallic sheen. It was definitely coming from inside the refrigerator. Up until that moment, Sunaina was confident that there was a logical explanation. But hearing it emerge from inside the fridge made her hair stand on end. The sound was clear, a raspy, throaty breathing. She waited for a moment, allowing her rational brain to take over and remind her that it was silly to think of goals and ghosts and refrigerators. Senana so slowly opened the refrigerator, but there was nothing there, except for the supplies for the next few days. The breath was even louder, though. The deep freezer in the top section seemed to be where it was coming from. Sonayana braced herself, and with all the courage that she could summon, she pulled on the refrigerator door, but it would not budge. It was iced in. She stared at it, heard the breathing sound, as loud as a person sleeping next to her. The next day, the technicians from the refrigerator company identified the problem. The setting of the freezer was off, and the ice had jammed the compartment. The breathing sound came from the compressor. It was normal, they told her, nothing to worry. They were wrong. It happened again. The breathing sound was unmistakable, but she could hear that it was more feminine this time. Not that she could make out clearly on the previous night. It was back to the refrigerator. And like the night before, she did not find anything in the main storage area. The deep freezer was where it was coming from. She put her ear to the door of the deep freeze. The breathing sounded like a wheezing sound, like an asthmatic woman, too human to be any compressor. Then a thought struck her. The lights! Why would they go off because of the compressor? Sunaina stepped back and yanked the door open. Inside, she found the severed head of a woman. It was turned the other way, making the long, blood-drenched hair the only identifiable feature. The blood from the raw, pulsating neck had drenched the eyes to a deep red color. Sonena screamed, slamming the door shut and rushed out of the kitchen. She bolted her bedroom shut and picked up her cell phone and dialed the number of her best friend, Asha. Her hands were trembling, and it took minutes before Asha could get one coherent word out of her. The next day she called Jay and asked him to fly down immediately. She was scared out of her wits. Either he came down or she was walking off. Jay tried hard to console her, finally. Asha came to the rescue and promised Sunaina that she would stay with her till Jay got back from his trip. All through the evening, Asha kept saying, See, there's no breathing sound. Do you hear anything? Sunaina felt like a fool but had to agree with Asha. The severed head was not going to allow Asha to win, though. And later that night, the breathing sound came again. An added dimension was a whisper 
that accompanied the breathing. The head was saying something. Senena grabbed her digital camera. She was going to film this for everyone to see. They steeled themselves and went to the refrigerator. Asha stood a little behind Senena. As Sonaina grabbed the deep freezer door and opened it, the head was there. But this time, it was facing her. Its eyes were gorged out and filled with blood, but it was easy to recognize. It was Asha. Sonaina screamed and turned around to find Asha's body writhing on the floor, headless. The aorta pumping out blood from her neck to the beating of her heart. Petrified, Sunaina collapsed on the bloody floor, paralyzed. Asha's cell phone rang. It was still in her hand. She recognized the number. It was her mother's number. But she had been dead for two years. Sunaina answered the phone. There was a whisper. It sounded like a mother, and it seemed to say, messages, messages, messages. Sunayana looked through the messages on Asha's phone. Her eyes fell on a conversation between Asha and Jay. Asha, your whiny wife is seeing a head in the refrigerator. Jay. Ha ha, you know she has lost her head. Asha, how much more do we have to tolerate her? When do we get rid of her? Jay, when I get back. And this time, for good. Sunaina stopped crying. And after a while, she began to hope that she would see Jay's head in the freezer the following night. Thank much. Thank you so much. Thank I you. definitely would not be opening my refrigerator tonight. <laughs> Well, that was absolutely amazing, and thank you so much for bringing back. Junior, we have a new. Yes, you're right. Uh, every story has an inspiration from from life, from from incidents, um, and that's what stories are, right? Yeah, yeah. Stories are what we narrate. Uh, when you go out of this press conference and and talk about this press conference to someone, it becomes a story. So everything is a story. We, our lives are stories. So real to real, that's how it works out. Well, I think uh, in the days where you know, people are saying that movie making is becoming very expensive, and I'm reading tweets and stuff about you know, people saying that the industry is you know, going to be costing a lot of money now to make a movie. I was like, hey, let's just tell a story on the web and make it as good as a movie. What the hell? <laughs> the 104 stories that we have earmarked for this, for this year, uh, two stories a week, Mondays and Thursdays, which makes it 52 weeks. You'll be surprised to know that there are only 12 horror stories. Uh, the others are like the one you saw right now, which is an emotional, uh, I would say, if it was a film, it would come under drama. There are stories of love. There are mythological stories, my favorite, Krishna. There are, you know, uh, as a matter of fact, when I used to write on Facebook, it was called the Kanha stories, and my Kanha stories used to get the most amount of likes. Um, so, I love writing about Krishna, uh, about Mahabharat, about our mythology. And then on the other side, I've written about parallel universes and quantum physics and what should happen if we meet ourselves uh, 20 years from today. Um, so there are stories of all kinds. It's like, you know, 
I think I'm the new princess of Arabian Nights. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, Vicky. Uh, you in your career, you have uh, discreetly done quite a few dubbing of your uh, actors, and you know, not so discreet if you know. <laughs> <laughs> in the sense, you know, like uh, what I mean is, it's uh, not publicly known. I mean, it's known to a section of the audience. Like everybody may not know who did the dubbing of Raz, and you know, like. Some sections of the audience would know. So what I'm, I'm appreciating that, that you had done the dubbing so well and you had mastered the art. So to what extent your proficiency in dubbing helps you narrate these stories in terms of voice modulation and, you know, the way you emote, uh, pause uh, as you're narrating? See, I have um, had the good fortune of being an assistant director to and that to the chief assistant director to three very big, very good directors. I was a chief assistant to Mukul Anand to start with all the way to Agnipat, then with Shekhar Kapoor, then with Mahesh Bhatt. As an assistant, I have the opportunity to work with some of the greats. I have worked with as an assistant, also directed Amitabh Bachchan and Mithun Chakrabarti and Dharmendra and uh, you know, I've worked with Amir and I've worked with... So I've worked with a lot of actors and I have directed a few. Uh, and I have learned from them. Uh, I've learned... You know, I've actually stood in the corner as an assistant and seen um, someone like Amitabh Bachchan in Agnipath. He used to have his file open on a table. I remember there was a scene in which he was supposed to go completely crazy with Madhvi's character when his mother had insulted him and we all broke for lunch and there he was just rehearsing and rehearsing and rehearsing um, and it was a treat to watch but also to learn I always tell my assistants and people who work with me that this is the only place we get paid to learn uh, so I think first that learning has helped me a lot and and then secondly, I think, you know, I like the stories I narrate. If it is a job, then it won't happen. If it's a passion, anybody can do it. Hi. Uh, sir, how do you plan to monetize the stories and uh, do you have any plans for that? So, uh, Sony Live is an advertising platform where a lot of advertisers put their uh, ads on the platform and that's our way of monetizing. So we believe that the advertising that will show around the show will pay for this. Okay, and uh, do you think it's a big challenge on digital to get revenue uh, since it is new and how do you see that? So I think the newness allows us to do new things. The newness allows us to experiment with platforms or experiment with formats. And I think that's the way we are uh, addressing it. Uh, we are an organization which is investing in this entire medium and the content behind it. We see this as a long-term play for us. We will be able to monetize it. We will be able to put uh, ads around it. And therefore, over a period of time, we will recover our money. So that's our agenda. We see this as a long-term content play in the digital space. As more and more telecom companies invest in the infrastructure, we believe this ecosystem will grow you know, upset some political group or uh, someone else and they will throw stones at your theatre and stop it. I think it's a stranglehold on storytellers. For too long, I think films have been a whipping horse. I mean, you know, if you want to make a statement against smoking, then you first put a disclaimer on, you know, on a film. Smoking is injurious, but you will not stop the pan shop. India is the only country where you get loose cigarettes. As a matter of fact, I remember I was smoking when I was very little and I went abroad and I asked the guy if he could give me two cigarettes and he looked at me like I was mad because there you can only a packet. So it's the only place in the world where you get that. You won't stop that. There'll still be horse carts on Juhu Beach and guys flagging the poor horse. But for us, even if it's computer graphics, we have to give them, okay, we did this with computer graphics. So we've become a whipping horse. And in that climate, Sony Live uh, and what, what we're doing comes as a breath of fresh air for anyone 
हु वॉन्ट्स टू डू समथिंग क्रिएटिव भट्ट साहब ये नए कलाकारों के लिए कितना चांस रहेगा इसमें आप रेपुटेड कलाकार लेंगे या नए नए लोगों को भी रखेंगे फिलहाल तो मैं अपने आप को चांस दे रहा हूँ <laughs> मैंने सोचा बहुत कर लिया लोगों के लिए अब खुद ही कहानियाँ बोल के अपने आप को स्टार बना देता हूँ बहुत हो गया नाच गाना अच्छा विक्रम वॉट इज द लॉजिक ऑफ हैविंग इंग्लिश सब टाइटल्स फॉर दिस वेन यू आर स्पीकिंग इन इंग्लिश सी वॉट हैपन्स इज दैट it's called transcripting yeah. and throughout the world it has been noticed that a lot of people follow things easier mm. if you have a you know a transcript another thing is that see the broadcast quality is something that we can only maintain to a certain point mm. uh, correct me if i'm wrong so that's your area but you know everybody is not going to watch it on hd yeah we be we might will be beaming on hd but you know someone is watching it on 240 P 480p, 720p, as as you know, however they get the network. So if someone is not getting proper network, mm. then at least if there's a word that he misses, he can read. Mm. You know, so that way you don't disconnect from the story. Okay. It's also followed a lot by the English film channels these days. So, you know, if you look at television and you look at the English channels, a lot of English channels will have. english subtitles running along it just helps you focus more and be able to follow better and you are not, sir i would like to ask sir. you uh, you are not targeting the non english speaking audience like the hindi belt who would probably want uh, subtitling in hindi so they can figure out what he's saying the uh, interpreter so uh, i think it, it the minute you start translating it then the meaning just becomes very different and the way it's read and the way it's understood is very different the purity of the storytelling is in the passion and the way in which but sahab is narrating it and i think we should maintain that purity rather than focus right now on translation let's see how it goes and then we'll see how to move ahead vikram sir over here priyanka uh, the trend of web uh, the trend of web series is really coming up so are you also planning to make one web series as it's a very short uh, I am making one already, okay. which is called Maya, but uh, that's not the platform we are on today. The camera के सामने आप काम करें तो कैसा लग रहा है आपको camera के सामने काम करना? देखिए ये काम तो मैं ज़िंदगी भर कर रहा था. कभी actors को सुनाता ऐसे, तो कभी जिसके पास पैसे उसको सुनाता हूँ. अभी सुना पैसे लोगों के पास है तो अभी वहाँ चला गया हूँ. लेकिन काम तो वही कर रहा हूँ मैं सिर्फ कैमरा लगा दिया मेरे सामने लेकिन कहानी तो इतनी शिद्दत से ही आज तक कह रहा हूँ थैंक यू या विक्रम दिस या 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 विक्रम विक्रम दिस पर्टिकुलर एपिसोड एंड आई थिंक इट्स ट्वेंटी मिनट्स समथिंग ट्वेंटी मिनट्स नो I think it's just 10 minutes. Ha. Huh. So it looks like 20 minutes. That you get so you get so engrossed in the story oh, as such. Oh, I wish you said it looks like 2 minutes. But no, 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 20 minutes. Mm. The best part is that there is a definite message in this particular episode. Yeah, and this one there is, yeah. Now since this media, the platform which you have gotten this live, Sony live, I think you can send across messages through most of your episodes, yani. Yeah, because there is a need as of today, yani. Yeah, because here also there is a very different message where people are not aware of the culture and this that and they are getting into some worse yeah. kind of uh, this yeah. yeah so in your consecutive episodes yeah, you can take a call on this yeah see i don't think anybody wants to be told what to do no not like that indirectly when you i know i know what yeah, you are trying to the say the message reaches across i think the stories have a different kind of sometimes you tell a story where you know you nod and you say ha yaar aisa hota hai sometimes the stories have a what if feeling okay yaar what if something like this were there like when you watch a film like narnia you know you go into a world and you say what if you know so i think stories answer a lot of needs sometimes there's a need for a message sometimes there's a need to create a world where you wish you were uh and fortunately all these stories that we have Uh, which will be aired have something or the other at the end of it that you take away so that your question is very important from that point of view that at the end of 10 minutes do you take away something correct yes you take away yes you either take away a message or you either take away a what if feeling and after you you know stop watching the story you wonder 
what would have happened if the story were true? Spaces that you have shot in, as in, uh, is, it, is it only interiors or exteriors? Maybe? So, no, this is a study of mine, mm -hmm. and I tell all my stories from there. The point is to be and take you everywhere with the story. Because the minute I start taking you, taking myself and narrating in different places, it defeats the purpose. Because some stories are even in outer space, you get the meaning, right? So, you know, the idea is to take you along with the story. Like, I think we went into Gangadhar's house with this story. Or you went into Sunaina's house with the refrigerator story. In your mind, you have to go to those, those places. That's storytelling. And uh, can you also talk about the target audience for this whole form program? That, I think... So, I think the target me. audience for a lot of this would be English speaking urban audiences. Uh, at least we believe <clears throat> the medium, uh, the mobile handheld uh, users are a lot in the urban areas. And because these, mo these uh, stories are told in English, I think a lot of urban audiences will like to hear some of these stories. As we progress, we'll see what to do. But I think we want to start off like this, uh, keep it urban. Also essentially because a lot of mobile audiences and 3G and 4G audiences are in urban cities right now. Reading. Yeah. Reading is extremely important because it's an input-output thing, right? Uh, you know, I think I read more than I write. I love to read. and But see, that's what I'm trying to tell you, that what, what does Once Upon a Time do? What does, this, what does this story do? There are a lot of people out there who love stories but don't like to read. So this is a show that brings that story to you and you don't have to sit with a book. You can just watch and imagine and someone is telling you a story. And this is actually reading for somebody, you know. Uh, but you don't have to go through the process and that's what uh, internet and the digital world has done for us. It has brought stories to us in different ways and you don't have to sit with a book and, and read. There are different ways now. I want to notice someone and give a role to someone. I'm serious. 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 मैं कह रहा हूँ आपसे मैं वादा करता हूँ आपको अगर आप किसी को जानते तो आप करवा दीजिए हाँ बिल्कुल मैं तगड़ा तैयार हूँ सो यू हैव ऑलवेज गिवन चांस टू न्यूकमर्स इन दिस इन टर्म्स ऑफ परफॉर्मेंस यू आर परफॉर्मिंग अलोन बट बिहाइंड द कैमरा आर यू गिविंग चांस टू न्यू there is Anupam Saroj, who yeah. has directed, it's his first directorial debut. Hmm. He has, um, he is the son of Santosh Saroj, who is a celebrated writer, who wrote Agnipat's dialogues also in screenplay. I was an assistant when I used to work with him. Now he was my assistant and now he's a director. There is Krishna, who is my daughter, who creatively handles the show. There is Isha, the writer. And, of course, Manu and Suganda, who is there to eat my head 24-7. She's the business head and Dharam. So all of them together are a whole new team and it's their first venture. So we can take on more questions one-on-one. -on -one. Web series ko launch karne ke piche us baare mein kuch batai aur kab aapko khayal aaya ki is tarah ka web series dekhiye jaise main wahan upar stage pe bhi keh chuka hu ki 
ये जो ख्याल है ना ये कहानियों को इस तरह ड्रामेटिकली पेश करना मैं फेसबुक पे अपनी कहानियाँ लिखता था और एक दिन ऐसे ही शुरू की मैंने कहानी लिखनी पहले कहानी छोटी होती थी बढ़ती गई एक पेज की हो गई तो कहते हैं कि मैं चल पड़ा धीरे धीरे कारवा बन गया तो पहले तो दस बारह लोग पढ़ते थे फिर सौ पढ़ते थे फिर हज़ारों पढ़ने लगे तो सोनी लेव जो हैं उन्होंने कहानियाँ पढ़ी मेरी और उन्होंने कहा कि आपको ना ये कह आके ये कहानी कैमरा के ऊपर पूरी एक्टिंग वैक्टिंग के साथ सुनानी चाहिए लोगों को मैंने कहा कि इसको इंटरेस्ट है यार कौन दिखा है उन्होंने कहा कि अरे आप करिए तो ज़रूर लोगों को कहानियाँ सुनने में बहुत ही इंटरेस्ट है आप करिए जब मैंने किया तो मैं खुद ही दंग रह गया कि कभी कभी दूसरे लोगों को आप पे ज़्यादा एतबार होता है अपने आप से तो सोच उनकी थी कहानियाँ मेरी है और बड़े पर्दे से क्यों शुरुआत नहीं की आपने वेब सीरीज से अपनी पर्टिकुलर रीज़न भी हैंड देखिए आपको लगता है कि ये कोई अभिनय है लेकिन ये अभिनय नहीं, नहीं है मैं कोई किरदार नहीं प्ले कर रहा हूँ कहानियाँ बोल रहा हूँ तो ये तो कोई भी कर सकता ना जैसे कंपेयरिंग का काम होता है या होस्टिंग का काम होता है मैं विक्रम भट्टी हूँ ना यहाँ पर मैं थोड़ी मतलब कोई एक्टर बन जा बन गया हूँ तो छोटे पर्दे बड़े पर्दे का वैसे भी फासला रहा नहीं है लेकिन अगर आप इंसिस्ट करें तो ये वैसे भी अभी नहीं तो है ना और कितना डिफिकल्ट रहा आपके लिए ये अभी नहीं करना बिल्कुल ही नहीं क्योंकि ये तो काम हम करते ही आ रहे हैं सालों से हमारा काम ही है ये हम प्रोड्यूसरों को कहानी सुनाते हैं एक्टरों को कहानी सुनाते हैं एक्साइट करते हैं पिक्चर के लिए जैसे महेश भट्ट साहब जो मेरे गुरु में कहते थे कि हम हैं ही भांड बरासी सब लोग तो हमारा काम है हम जिसको मंकी डांस कहते हैं कि जाओ भाई मंकी डांस करो किसी के सामने तो ये तो हमारा पुराना शौक़ है कहानियाँ बोलने का फ़र्क ये है कि इस बार कुछ सूट वूट पहन के कुछ ढंग से कुछ शूट किया है नो आई नेवर वॉन्ट टू बी एन एक्टर अल्टर यू वाई बिकॉज वेन यू आर एन एक्टर यू डिपेंड ऑन अदर पीपल टू कम विथ यू विथ स्क्रिप्ट यू कॉन्ट क्रिएट योर ओन अनलेस यू आर लाइक अ राज कपूर हु कैन डू इट हु इज़ अ प्रोड्यूसर डायरेक्टर कितने सारे ऐसे एक्टर हैं अच्छे एक्टर हैं जो वेट करते हैं अपॉर्चुनिटी के लिए कि कोई हमारे पास आए तो मैंने कहा खुद क्यों ना खुद ही अपॉर्चुनिटी क्रिएट करूँ देखिए मुझे ना कहानियाँ तो वैसे भी बहुत पसंद है आप बिलीव नहीं करेंगे कि जैसे अगर मैं दिल्ली चला गया किसी काम से और मैं एयरपोर्ट से जा रहा हूँ तो मैं पूछ लेता हूँ ड्राइवर को कहाँ के हो वो बताता है मैं पूछता हूँ दिल्ली कैसे आ गए फिर वो गाड़ी चलाता है कहानी सुनाता है मैं कहानी सुनता हूँ और उसकी कहानी में खो जाता हूँ हम लोग सब कहानी में ही कहानी में ही जीते हैं देखिए अब रूमर कहिए तो कहानी गॉसिप कहिए तो कहानी इंसिडेंट नरेट करें तो कहानी है न्यूज़ देखें तो कहानी हर चीज़ कहानी ऐसा तो होता ही है देखिए कुछ ना कुछ तो आपके साथ होता ही है वरना आप इंसिडेंट क्रिएट कर सकते और टारगेट ऑडियंस क्या होगी वही आइए सर सो ये टारगेट ऑडियंस इसकी ये बिकॉज हम सोनी लिव मोबाइल पे है इट्स एन ऐप ऑन द मोबाइल सो लॉट ऑफ टारगेट ऑडियंस विल बी पीपल जो मोबाइल पे हैं जो मोबाइल पे इसको देख सकते हैं हम चाहते हैं कि ये बहुत लोग देखें फिल्म के में आपको टिकट देनी पड़ती है यू नो खर्चा होता है यहाँ पे आपको फ्री आप सोनी लिव का ऐप डाउनलोड कीजिए और ये इसका मजा लीजिए सो दी आइडिया इज़ टू रीच आउट टू अ लार्ज ऑडियंस बट बिकॉज मोबाइल ऑडियंस है थ्री जी फोर जी जी हो तो ये अर्बन सिटी ऑडियंस will be a bigger part of it but obviously the reach will go to smaller cities also point of the country you have to pay for the content given online so do you think that is the way forward for the media band also for generally digital content in india not for the time being okay. but maybe at some point in time uh, movies are paid uh, on sony live but this kind of a content we want it to reach maximum number of people so jitne logo ko zyada milega utna hamare liye acha hai 
हम चाहते हैं कि एडवर्टाइजर एंड एडवर्टाइजिंग पे इसका खर्चा निकले एंड देयरफॉर वी ट्राइंग टू रीच आउट टू द मैक्सिमम एनी प्लान्स टू लॉन्च इन